Yeah, so uh, my name is Sujit Dimalo, uh, being a member of BCUG, I think for maybe about three, four years, started uh, when they were meeting in person, and uh, it was nice to meet up everybody uh, with everyone, I think in Tintin Falls, uh, for the most uh, most part, uh, but I've uh, been enjoying uh, the online presence now, the one with Zoom, so uh, I, I do agree that's a, a good uh, a good forum to meet. I've been... Uh, Working at Microsoft for about 18 years now uh, as a software engineer, uh, still continue to be a software engineer. I know a lot of people say, you know, why are you still programming? And I say, yep, I'm still programming, uh, just like I was, uh, you know, when I got out of uh, college. So it's something I certainly enjoy doing and I've continued doing it uh, till today. One uh, one thing that's uh, uh, kind of come up recently uh, in the last 10 years or so is the advent of the cloud. Uh, and I think we all know about that. But uh, when uh, I was at uh, uh, in the early days of the cloud, I realized that there wasn't uh, much of a presence that Microsoft had uh, in terms of the podcast space uh, as it relates to the cloud. And so I went on this journey of uh, creating a podcast to talk about uh, the Azure cloud, which is Microsoft's cloud. Uh, that was the topic of the podcast. And uh, as a result, uh, you know, I've learned a lot about podcasting, about uh, how you, how, how you can be good at it, how, uh, why it's, why it could be difficult at times. And, uh, I've collected this, uh, little PowerPoint deck of things I've learned over the years, which, uh, I'd like to share with you today. Uh, uh, before I, uh, start, I would like to ask, uh, the members of the audience here, what, uh, are the top podcasts that you listen to? If anybody can come off the, uh, mute button and let us know of any podcasts that you listen to today. Actually, one of the reasons why I was interested in having you present about this is because even though podcasting is not brand new, I never listened to any podcasts. And I only started even looking for something that might be interesting to me as a result of you introducing this idea again into my consciousness. Fair enough. Okay, uh, I think then we can certainly uh, dive into that. Uh, is there anybody else that has ever uh, heard any podcasts or uh, even uh, maybe not on their phone, but maybe, uh, you know, on their computer or anything like that? How about uh, YouTube? Uh, do, you, do you watch like shows on YouTube, like, you know, people talking about stuff on YouTube? Uh, maybe I, subscribe. I do a lot. Uh, okay. Yeah. So that's so that's kind of like a, almost like a form of podcasting in a sense. It's just you know uh, as a video element to it. So that's uh, some people say that's a form of podcasting too. So could, I listen to uh, various tech shows, science and technology shows, um, and there's uh, the um, can't think of his name now. The tested, the guy who was a white, uh, white haired guy on Mythbusters. He's got a show. Oh. Adam okay. Savage. Yes. I, 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 I don't right. listen to these regularly. The one I listen to most right now is, um, View of the Fifth, Bow of the Fifth Column. And you watch that on your computer uh, at regular times or on your phone? How do you consume that? It's usually consumed on the computer, although I'm about to, I'm really serious in thinking of switching more to podcast form because, uh, well, there's, he's got video, but there's really nothing on it or much except yep. him talking. And so, yep, I think that's, uh, uh, I think you'll learn a lot with what I have to share here. So thanks for that. Uh, Hi. Robert. So I, I have my son-in-law is a fisherman and he, he, he does a fishing podcast. Oh, that's amazing. Look at that. <laughs> Good for him. Yeah. He's been doing that for years. Excellent. All right. Uh, okay. So let's just uh, move on with this presentation now. So the agenda is kind of loosely uh, like this. And I think uh, John had shared this ahead of, ahead of time as well, but I'm just going to give uh, a perspective from somebody who wants to first, who wants to, who may be thinking of starting a podcast and then how you would consume a podcast. So we'll look at both sides of podcasting and then give you some tips and tricks on how you can be successful at podcasting. Uh, and, um, and then if we have time, 
uh, I actually want to show you how you would publish a podcast uh, because as it as it turns out, uh, we just recorded uh, our last podcast uh, two days ago, and uh, I'm about ready to publish it today. So I can go through some of the steps that I go through when I publish a podcast, just so you know that it's not uh, some dark science or something like that. It, you know, it's actually the technology for podcasting. And well, won't give away too much right now. Is actually very old. Uh, and you'll, uh, I think m- almost everybody here will know about it. So, uh, let's, uh, uh, let's see if we have time and I'd like to kind of dive into that. All right. So, uh, let, let me first start by saying, uh, talking about why, if you know, uh, why you would think about starting a podcast. So a podcast is just a kind of a high level of what a podcast is. Uh, as uh, Sandy and Gilbert and others have said, it's essentially uh, people talking about some topic that they feel passionate about, right? And that's that's really where a podcast first uh, comes up. But uh, you know, it's a big time commitment. Uh, I'm sure if Sandy would have talked to his uh, son-in-law, or uh, he'd find out that you know it, it takes a few hours every every week. If, if you're doing a weekly podcast, uh, it's for me it's at least two or three hours a week of time commitment. So you got to be sure that you want to do this, right? Um, but there's a lot of benefits for somebody who wants to start a podcast. One is uh, it forces you to keep up with the technology if it's technical podcast. Obviously, if it's something else like fishing, uh, you know, it kind of also forces you to be in, on top of that, uh, uh, you know, uh, of that topic. Uh, so in fishing, in that case, uh, there's a lot of public growth that comes out of it, uh, personal growth. Uh, for example, it has definitely improved my public speaking. I was uh, I always found it difficult speaking in a public forum before in a big forum like this, and uh, I think because of podcasting, I was able to overcome that fear and uh, learn how to speak carefully, learn how not to have ooms and ahs when I speak, speak more fluently. Writing also improved, so it definitely helped from a personal growth perspective. Of course, uh, one of the things that podcasting does is establishes you as an expert in the community. So whatever community it might be, uh, you, you would be seen as an expert. Like uh, Gilbert said, you know, he kind of goes, uh, he watches uh, uh, Savage uh, Savage Show. Savage is known to be an expert in that, you know, in blowing up things, I suppose. So, uh, you know, <laughs> you, you would go there. You, you would kind of, you know that you, you want to listen to him uh, for what he has to say. Oh, no, uh, no, no. What's that? No blowing up on, uh, <clears throat> on oh, no blowing up on that. Savage. <laughs> okay. No, uh, it's, it's, uh, although he does reminisce on the Mythbuster days, he's more into um, a maker, how to make things. Uh, now. Good. So he's, so he's making some things instead of blowing them up. Sounds good. Uh, and then, uh, of course, uh, you know, career growth, uh, not only inside of a company, uh, of course, I work at Microsoft, so it definitely helps me inside the company, but even outside, y- your name is out there. If you ever have to look for a job, I think people will recognize your name. And, uh, you know, if you, if you, again, if you're working for a company and you have sort of commitments that you have to do for your role, it certainly has helped me. Uh, but that's kind of only if you're, you know, if you're doing it as part of a company, company job. So, uh, you know, what are the themes, uh, for podcasts? You already heard about some of the themes, uh, the, like a maker, uh, maker theme or a fishing theme, for example. Whatever it is, you have to be very passionate about this, uh, about this topic, right? Uh, to be able to speak about it confidently and uh, even discuss it with other people for that matter. One of the recommendations I have given uh, folks who want to start a podcast is not to pick a, a theme that is very niche or very narrow in its uh, in its focus. One of the the two problems that come out of that is there's fairly low interest. So yes, you might get a few people listening in, but it certainly would not attract a wide audience. And secondly, is that one of the uh, I'm sure uh, you know if you start looking at podcasts, you will find thousands of podcasts out there that only started a few shows and died, right? They only go for a few episodes. They really don't go very far. And that's one of the problems with podcasts is that if you don't have enough content, you never go, you're going to run out of content sooner or later. And that's why you have these niche shows that eventually run out of content. But if you take something more general purpose, like fishing, for example, maybe there's a lot to talk about. And, you know, you, you, you're unlikely to run out of content. 
the passion, of course, is just not good. It's not enough. You have to be very good at it. Uh, you want to be confident if you're talking in a public forum about that topic and not be fumbling around. So certainly that is the, you have to have that. I recommend going for a shorter, a shorter podcast. Podcasts can vary in length. Uh, if, if you go about looking for podcasts today, they can vary from about 30 minutes to about an hour. I prefer the more on the 30 minute side. Uh, one of the reasons I prefer that and I, when I started doing this is a lot of people listen to podcasts when they're exercising. That's a very popular time to listen to a podcast. You, know, you put your earphones on, put you on the phone and you kind of, you know, go on the treadmill or on the bike uh, and you, and you listen to a podcast while you're exercising. And I'm sure, I don't know how many, how many, how long you guys exercise, but I generally exercise about 30 minutes at a time. Right. And so for me, that, uh, that was a good, good enough time. And I, we got the feedback that that's a good time, uh, to run the podcast. So we, our podcasts are typically about 30 minutes, uh, long. Uh, of course, if you know your audience and, and the audience has a capacity just to, to listen for longer, you can certainly go longer, but I would start at 30 minutes. And uh, if you're looking for a podcast, I would also look for podcasts that fall in that range. Uh, I think once you've gone beyond 30 minutes, it's your attention span uh, uh, will not be there. Uh, when you when you, if you're dealing with a technical podcast, uh, like uh, like for example, Gilbert's talking about the maker community. Yes, I mean you know you get pretty technical in there, but when you're talking in an audio format. There's not a very, uh, a lot you can kind of explain. You can't really uh, draw diagrams and whatnot, right? There's not, you have to be able to verbalize everything you're talking about. So you don't want to get into a podcast that's too technical or too deep where it's difficult to follow what the person is saying. Uh, for example, if you think about, uh, we have the photography, uh, uh, you know, podcast, I mean, a show, uh, on the BCUG a few months ago. And you can imagine if that was done on an audio only format, it would be very difficult, right? You wouldn't understand what was happening because you needed that, you needed some reference, some, some, uh, graphic reference, uh, to understand what the person was saying. So, yeah, I mean, you, you, you have to make sure that your, uh, your, your, your technical depth is not, is, is not too deep. And if you are going to start a podcast, uh, and, um, uh, this is, this is something to keep in mind is you have to have content for at least 15 to 20 shows. Uh, if you go out there looking for podcasts today, you'll find that there are some podcasts where it's just two people that, you know, come on the show, the same two people uh, or three people that uh, talk about stuff. OK, so that's one kind of podcast you're going to find. Then there's another kind of podcast you're going to find where there's two people that are asking the questions and maybe there's other people who are brought in from show to show to answer the questions or discuss something. And there's a more like a dialogue between these people. But the two people are fixed and the other guests, so we call them the co-hosts and the, and the other two are, are the others that may be called the guests. And they uh, and they would change every show. Now, for the first 15 or 20 episodes, uh, if you're going to start a new podcast, you have to be ready to do it yourself. You're unlikely to get a guest coming in on a brand new podcast because the guest doesn't know, has never heard of your podcast. You know, you're not well known. It takes a while for you to be known in the podcast community. It probably takes more than 20 episodes, but at least 50 to 20 episodes, you have to be ready to do it uh, with yourself or you and a partner uh, together. Uh, you have to be ready to, 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 to kind of run those shows completely by yourself without any uh, guests. Beyond, uh, once you pass that critical kind of point and you get uh, more of an exposure in the podcast community, you might find guests are more likely to come onto your show. And so that's why I say always uh, be sure you have enough uh, content for at least 15 to 20 episodes uh, before you get started. Now, of course, we've talked about how the formats are. There's generally two formats, audio and video. Uh, I think the folks have been talking about the YouTube option, which is definitely popular. Uh, we've, uh, when we started our podcast, we decided on an audio version, primarily, like I said, because people who wanted to consume it did it when they were exercising or when they were biking or when they were driving in and uh, from work or uh, back to home or something like that. Uh, and so that, that audio format was very important for us. And we got a lot of feedback that they appreciated that. So, uh, as I mentioned earlier, one of the problems with audio is that we have to keep the discussion very high level. We can't go too deep uh, or too technical because we can't have any pictures or demos. At the time, uh, like I mentioned early on, Microsoft did not have any official podcast presence on uh, for Azure. And so, uh, you know, 
we decided to start one. Me and another gentleman, a colleague of mine, uh, who's still on the show, still co-host with me, uh, we did, we decided to start this approximately uh, uh, just under uh, ten years ago. Now, uh, if you are uh, you know planning to start a podcast, you want to find a topic like this that's not been covered. If if there's already five people out there that have podcasts on a topic, uh, then you know it's no point having a six person or uh, being you being the sixth uh, person, uh, you know. Uh, talking about that because then you're kind of competing with them. So uh, you got to look for areas where you feel there's not enough representation and maybe start your own topic, uh, your own podcast. It's similar to the point where you go looking out for podcasts, right? You you go look out for certain topics, maybe a hobby that you have, and uh, you're gonna, you're going to find maybe there's only a handful of handful uh, full of people that that ha- that talk about that. Similar to that, you know, if you feel like hey, there's nobody that's talking about my hobby, right? Whatever wood carving or whatever it may be. Uh, so then go ahead and start a podcast on what cabin, right? That's, 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 that's what will trigger you to start the podcast, your own podcast. Now, uh, with any questions before I continue, I want to just pause here for a second. All right. So, uh, let me talk about how we go about uh, recording a podcast. Okay. Uh, and uh, you'll see a picture of me in my basement here, which is the same basement I'm sitting in now, uh, just a different angle, uh, but it's the same basement. Um, so I generally sit in my basement and I record my podcast. I have a, a Blue Yeti um, a microphone over there, which is what I'm using right now as well. As you can see, it's right off camera here. And, um, uh, you know, essentially, there's no magic. You just use, like, just like John's recording this meeting on Zoom. Uh, I could take that meeting and make it into a podcast if I wanted to, right? You got to make sure you have a good microphone, quiet space, good uh, good audio. Uh, you can't see it behind me, but on the wall behind uh, behind this setup over here, I have uh, soundproofing panels on the wall to avoid um, uh, 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 bouncing, you know, my my voice bouncing off the wall and hitting the uh, microphone at the back just to avoid uh, to keep the audio crisp. So there's a little bit of setup that's required just to make sure you have a good space over here. But other than that, there's nothing complicated. It's just, you know, uh, any any PC or Mac that you may have, uh, you can run Teams or Zoom on it and record it. Uh, when you uh, record the meeting, uh, as uh, as you've seen, when John, uh, you know, creates the podcast, uh, the the YouTube version of it, it's just a, it's just a video file, right? It's an MP4 file or MPEG file uh, that you get and Essentially, uh, you you know you have to take that file and do some processing with it. So, what's the what does that post uh, post production uh, look like when you get this podcast uh, with this video file? So, uh, I think I mentioned this uh, when I did the last session on the top Windows uh, programs that I have uh, uh, that I like, and one of them was Audacity, uh, which I think many of you have used or like. And Audacity is a nice free audio editor. It lets you uh, import um, a video file it extracts the audio component of it and then lets you do lots of audio processing on it right so there's some audio processing we want to do on this uh, on this file uh, before we uh, publish it out uh, and make it available for the in, everybody on the internet to consume things like we remove the awkward uh, silences in the in the in their when you listen to a podcast, you'll notice that there aren't a whole lot of uh, pauses. The, the, the podcasts flow pretty smoothly, and that's because they remove all the uh, all the all the pauses in between. It helps to keep the podcast uh, shorter and makes it easier to hear as well. We also remove all of the silence, uh, the clicks uh, that you may um, uh, you may hear. Uh, of course, I have a pop filter on my microphone, so hopefully. There's not a whole lot of pops, here, uh, clicks here, but sometimes you do get clicks in the audio and uh, Audacity can get, remove them as well. And then the finally is uh, to normalize the highs and the lows, because if you're talking with uh, other folks on a Zoom call, for example, somebody's mic might be uh, uh, lower than mine. And so everyone sounds at a different volume. This uh, There's a setting in uh, Audacity to just equalize everything so that everybody comes at the equal volume. And finally, you know, once you've done all this processing, you can just com- convert it to an MP3 file, right? And that's it, right? Uh, essentially, the whole podcasting world, world runs on MP3 files. So that's one of the kind of uh, things that uh, uh, you'll you'll figure out is that it's when you when you listen to a podcast, you're downloading an MP3 file to your phone or your computer, and you're listening to it, and and that's the end of it. Now, 
we put some metadata in the MP3 file, things like they call them tags, like the names of the hosts, the guests, episode name, the year it was recorded, uh, things like that. Uh, another thing that you may you will hear if you uh, listen to podcasts is uh, at the start of every podcast, there may be some kind of a music. And at the end of the podcast, there'll be some music. And then, of course, there'll be the podcast in the middle. And that's uh, entry and exit music. That's what they call it. And uh, you can get uh, royalty-free music from ccmixter.org. That's the website that I got it from. They have about 10,000 uh, royalty-free uh, clips that you can choose from. So I kind of went through them, did some searching, and picked up a, a few that I liked. And then we we kind of use that as a start and end of our, of our uh, uh, podcast. Now, once you, uh, once you, uh, have recorded the podcast, you want to make it available for everybody else. And this is kind of one of the, uh, uh, the secrets of, uh, of podcasting, right? You have to, uh, kind of host the, the feed to your podcast somewhere. That's what it's all ca called. It's called the feed. And you'll see in the, in the bullet point in the middle of the screen over there, that the entire podcasting world runs on an RSS feed, right? Like that's what I said earlier. I'm sure everybody here has used RSS in some form or the other. And essentially podcasts work on RSS, on the RSS format. So when you are uh, consuming a podcast, you're actually consuming an RSS feed from somewhere. And that RSS feed has certain elements in it, which tell it, you know, what the name of the podcast is, some description, maybe some pictures. And also, uh, what the name of that MP3 file is that, uh, that is corresponding to that podcast episode. And so that's, that's essentially what, uh, you have to host somewhere. Of course, there are third parties, uh, that host podcasts for you for a small fee these days. I think it's it ranges from, you know, $10 a month uh, to, to maybe a little higher, depending on the features that they provide. But essentially, they, that's what they let you do. You know, they let you uh, upload your 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 uh, audio, uh, put some pictures, put some information there, and they make all this that RSS feed essentially available to you. Uh, when I uh, started doing this, uh, we uh, you we just used some open source software called BlogEngine.net, and that's what we hosted on uh, Microsoft Azure, and that is what it's still running today. I'm happy to say uh, that the website is still going after 10 years. So. Uh, uh, it's, it's good because if I have to redo this, uh, it'll, it'll take quite a lot of effort. But essentially it's, uh, you know, hosting a podcast is nothing more than hosting a blog. I'm sure many of you have either consumed blogs or maybe even have written your own blogs. The, uh, essentially it's just, just the, the podcast is just a blog and each of the posts in the blog is the episode, right? So, um, you know, if you go to azpodcast.com, which is the website for, uh, the Azure podcast, it's, uh, it, it, there are 458, uh, posts in there. That's what they call them, right? And each post is a separate episode. So it's, it's, it's there's nothing too complex with that. But one of the things with, uh, with making, uh, a podcast feed, the RSS feed more easy to consume by our smartphones today, like most people today listen to podcasts on their phones. And there are many apps, uh, including the iTunes uh, app or uh, even Spotify and uh, uh, and Audible and whatnot. But uh, you know, any 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 uh, third-party podcast app as well. In order for them to consume the RSS feed, there are certain elements in the RSS feed that have to be added. And uh, there is something called the Google uh, Feed Burner, which is a free service that Google has offered for many many years. That does this automatically. It takes your RSS feed and it makes it, it makes it look nice so that the podcast applications, the podcast apps can consume it properly. Okay. And I think I do have a, a little, uh, this is what the feed burner looks like today. Uh, it's actually, it, it used to be a lot more complex than this, but I think, you know, Google as with uh, most other things have been cutting costs. So they've kind of trimmed this, uh, this service down quite a bit. But it does enough uh, uh, as far as uh, uh, my needs go. And as you can see, uh, you know, this is how I indicated where my original uh, RSS feed is. Uh, and, and then it adds all the uh, additional elements to that feed and makes it available here. And if you pull down the elements of the feed, this is what it looks like. This is like a typical RSS feed over here uh, that, that, that comes out of it. You can see that there's the title of the uh, show over there. And here's the latest episode, right? And here's some information. 
the main thing uh, that you want to see is there is a, a, an MP3 file in here somewhere. Uh, that is the, the most important part. Let's see where I can find that. Let's do a search for MP3. That's MP3. No, that's not what I want to look for. Dot. Uh, and there you go. So there's the MP3 in the text, right? But uh, where you want to see it, you want to have this enclosure field over here. And you can see how it has created a special enclosure field with the MP3, the link to the MP3 uh, hosted in it. And this is uh, what the FeedBurner application does. It just makes it look nicer so that the, uh, the podcast applications can consume your podcast a lot more uh, easily. In terms of the kind of overall flow for, for doing this, right? Uh, you record the podcast, like uh, I was saying earlier, you do the audacity, work on it, and then you get an MP3 file. You upload that MP3 to some public uh, storage. I use Azure Blob Storage. Uh, and then that public link for that storage for that MP3 file, uh, which is what you saw uh, over here. This is the public link right here. So you can actually click on this link and it would download the, uh, the MP3 for you. Uh, that, that public link is what is, oops, is what is put inside of the RSS feed, right? And then that's passed to FeedBurner. FeedBurner will then augment that RSS feed and it is consumed directly by the podcast app. So if you open up, if you open up any podcast app today and look for the Azure podcast, uh, it'll find that RSS feed and it will just show you all of the episodes in it and you'll be able to play it instantly, right? So it's a very simple process, right? Using RSS, uh, feeds as a mechanism. But it's uh, surprisingly effective. Now, when you uh, run the uh, when you run the podcast app on your phone, you're actually downloading this MP3 directly from here using this arrow on the side here. So that's where it downloads the MP3 to your phone and it plays it just like any other MP3 file. It's, it's no different at that point. Uh, some people have talked about how they consume YouTube channels, and uh, we also have a YouTube channel. But it's for me, for us, it's more like a secondary channel. It's not the primary. The primary is audio. Uh, but we did find a lot of people uh, 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 like uh, like Gilbert, for example, or, or uh, anybody else who has looked at uh, YouTube uh, channel subscriptions. It's easy for them to subscribe to these channels on YouTube, right? Because they're already subscribing to a whole lot of other things on YouTube. And so it's another channel that they can subscribe and they can consume. So, you know, we said, hey, let's just make it easy. We just upload all of our uh, recordings, the meeting recordings directly to YouTube as they are, right? And you can see that this is just standard uh, recording of meetings similar to the regular Zoom recordings that we're doing over here. Now, what we found out is that, uh, you know, uh, with, with the YouTube, of course, hosting YouTube is free. So there's no cost, obviously. And so it's good for, for somebody who's, who's hosting, who's, who's uploading those recordings. Uh, it's also good if you, if you want to have demonstrations and show things because you have the video there. Uh, but it's not a great for me, you know, if you're just going to have general dis uh, discussions, you know, I think um, uh, somebody was saying how, you know, just hearing two people talk all the time gets kind of boring on video, right? Uh, and so uh, that's one of the things that we've seen is it's not great for just to have two people talk on video. Nobody, it's kind of uh, annoying to just sit and listen to two people talk. But the subscribing feature that YouTube has is convenient. Uh, for tech content, which is what we have, we found that it's not a whole lot of appetite to listen to YouTube on uh, for tech content. And of course, if you, as you all know, when you look at the YouTube, you have to listen to the ads and that can be a little annoying. <clears throat> so, uh, I have some tips and tricks over here on, you know, what it might be to, if you do decide to host your own podcast. Okay. One thing is that, uh, I definitely recommend you have more than one co-host. Don't be the only person on the show because nothing more boring than hearing one person talk all the time. You want to have at least two people more if you can. <clears throat> Uh, I would say have four or five co-hosts because this way, you know, if one, if some weeks somebody's not available, they're on vacation or they have other plans, uh, at least there's enough people to kind of cover and uh, make the show go on. So that's, that's another recommendation. You have to have a regular cadence. If you go out there looking for podcasts today, you'll find that the podcast, the, the more popular podcasts, the ones that show up on the top of your list are the ones that, uh, are on a regular cadence. They might be every week. Some of them are maybe more than uh, more than once a week, but they're on some regular cadence. If you do it once a month, sometimes that's a little too far apart. 
So you want to shoot for at least once a week or once every other week is what I would suggest. Uh, and if you're talking about on podcasts and you do, you know, you do talk about whatever topic you're, you're, you're you know, you're passionate about, avoid using uh, too many acronyms. Uh, people sometimes don't understand the acronym. So you have to make sure everybody it, can understand what you're talking about. We do use, uh, you know, that the, our, uh, we do create a Twitter uh, uh, account so that uh, people can, we can inform us, uh, our listeners, uh, what, what's going on and uh, maybe have, take suggestions from them, et cetera. But you need to have somebody keeping an eye on that Twitter account. <clears throat> of course, there's other things you could use, like you could use like a, a OneNote uh, to just to share uh, uh, kind of ideas with your co-hosts uh, and things like that. Also, uh, when you do have multiple uh, co-hosts uh, on a show, uh, sometimes they tend to talk over each other, which can be also annoying on a podcast to listen to many people talking over each other. It's annoying anyway, anytime you, uh, that happens, but it's even more annoying on a podcast. And so using a way to coordinate access for people talking is very important. So I think uh, Zoom has a feature where you can raise your hand and talk and send so does Steam. And so we use that feature a lot, right? Uh, the course will, will raise their hand. Of course, uh, the person who is listening to the podcast or listening to the video will not see that those hands, but at least when you're actually reporting it, you can do it in a coordinated manner. <clears throat> Uh, the, 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 once you've kind of passed those 25, 20 or 25 episodes that you've done on your own, you can start going out, you can start going out and looking for other guests to come on, right? So, uh, if, uh, you know, uh, I guess Sandy said he's, uh, listens to, uh, uh, a fishing podcast or his son, his son-in-law has a fishing uh, podcast. And, uh, and then, you know, if he wants to find, other people to come on his show to talk about something about fishing. Maybe it's about, you know, trout fishing or whatever it may be the case. He'll, you know, uh, you have to go and find these people, right? Where do you go and find them? <clears throat> so one is to just find people in your, in your own community, right? Uh, in our community, uh, for example, if I were to have a show on Linux, I would know that I would reach out to someone like Sergey, right? Because he's obviously known for, uh, to us to be very, very good at Linux. And so you can kind of get him on the show and have him uh, talk about some Linux stuff. Similar to that, if you have somebody that you know that's good uh, at, at at what you want to talk about, you know, do invite them to the show, have them and do it. Uh, the other one is to go out to um, uh, uh, discussion boards. You know, me, uh, things like the BCUG uh, or the the uh, uh, our uh, uh, bulletin board service that we have, Groups.io. <clears throat> You go there and see, okay, what, what are people talking about? Who's, you know, who's, who seems to be providing the most uh, uh, feedback on a particular topic? Oh, that person must be good at that topic. Uh, maybe they can come on the show and talk about it. So that's another way we source uh, guests as well, just keeping an eye on these things. So you got to go do some homework and look around and find people that are out there. Because people, you know, everyone's got expertise at something, right? At least that's my uh, uh, uh my philosophy. And it's just a matter of finding somebody who has the expertise that you're looking for. Uh, of course, there's also the, you can also look at the world of the, the internet in general. You go on Twitter, you start searching around, see who's, who's kind of blabbing about these things more often than others. Uh, reach out to them, DM them, uh, direct message them, find out if they're interested in coming on the show. So you could source them that way as well. And of course, if you're really popular, then you do get companies reaching out to you. In our case, we do have companies that are, you know, constantly asking us if they can come on the show. <laughs> uh, that's okay. And then, uh, and then, of course, uh, just as you get uh, um, subscribe guests coming on the show, you also want to make sure you have more subscribers to your show, right? How do how do you find? Uh, Mm, uh, podcast. Most people will just search for it. You go on to Google and you say, uh, uh, you know, look for a particular podcast or look for some topic and see if there's podcasts out there, right? Uh, like, for example, if you just look for the fishing podcast or something like that, maybe you find uh, one that, uh, that Sandy was talking about. So you have to make sure that your podcast is out there so people can find it, right? If people, if, if, if you create this RSS feed of your podcast and nobody knows about it, there's going to be nobody listening to your show, right? That's that's the thing. And that's the truth for any any anything you put on the internet. <clears throat> so how do you make this more uh, discoverable? One is the most uh, the most the most common thing is to just put it on the search engines, right? Uh when when we started the Azure podcast, I had to set up an account with Google uh, webmaster tools, add my uh, RSS feed to Google, 
uh, so that it would show up in the Google search uh, results. Same thing with Bing. And then uh, over most recently, I've had to do it with Spotify. So if you go to Spotify now and you look for the Azure podcast, you'll find you'll find it right away because it's part of Spotify. Uh, the same with uh, iTunes. If you use any of the uh, Apple iTunes uh, uh, podcasting apps, you'll find it there as well. <clears throat> Yeah, and Audible too. <clears throat> you can uh, you can ask Alexa to, for example, to play uh, to play the podcast. <clears throat> so uh, all of these things, you know, require uh, some additional steps to go in so that to you make your podcast more discoverable. Uh, of course, if you you know into LinkedIn and things like that, there's of course things you can do there as well <clears throat> uh, to to increase uh, the the audience. And of course, I uh, definitely don't want to forget about the global audience. I have a list uh, on the right-hand side, which shows you the top countries that our subscribers come from today. Of course, the United States, United Kingdom, Canada, Sweden, Australia. Uh, we see we have somebody from Australia today. So uh, they're number five, five on the list here. And then uh, Denmark, Germany, Finland, India, Netherlands, Ireland, et cetera. So let's not forget, you know, podcasting, uh, the, the audience is all over the world. Uh, you know, people will want to talk about fishing from any part of the world, right? So you yeah, just keep that in mind. <clears throat> uh, and then, you know, uh, of course, we have this. It's a little, this, this slide is a little bit technical, but uh, we do want to keep a track of, you know, all the uh, or like how many uh, people are using are downloading our show. So I have created some uh, some kind of scripts. I've written some scripts, PowerShell scripts actually uh, that run uh, and yeah, and and kind of. Try and figure out how many uh, how many people are, are downloading our podcast, and that that information is put on our website automatically. So if you go to our website, you'll see a number over there, which indicates how many downloads were there over the last week. <clears throat> so that is kind of the uh, the my presentation. I just want to stop and see if there's any questions or people want to would like to kind of uh, me to answer any other questions about podcasting that I can help help with. I know some people said they were new to podcasting. They had not done it before. Uh, I'm not sure that this presentation will directly help there, but I'd be happy to uh, to kind of ask, answer any questions in that space if you still have them. I was wondering, do people start podcasting to make money? Like how, hmm. I understand how advertising is done on websites, but here with an audio and an RSS feed, is there money to be made from advertising or do most podcasters want to monetize? It, it, it's, a, it's a good question. And that kind of uh, tells, it's, it's, it kind of, if you go back to when podcasting first started, I would say it was not for money, right? People were doing it for more for their interests, for their passion, they wanted to share. Maybe, you know, get known, uh, get their name out there, like I mentioned. But over time, for sure, more recently, uh, it has become a much more commercial uh, business. Uh, so if someone's doing a fishing podcast, for example, it's quite likely that, you know, they, they, they might put sponsor messages on the fishing podcast. So, uh, you know, just like we have entry music and all that, they may have a sponsor message uh, weaved into their audio. And of course, then, you know, the uh, sponsors would pay them some money. Uh, in our case, we made the we made the decision not to uh, to talk about anything sales or commercial related. Right? It was all about what we thought we were passionate about and what our guests are passionate about, without without trying to sell anything to anybody. So it really depends on on what. But uh, you're right, John. Uh, there's a lot of podcasts out there today, and a lot of money to be made of podcasts. I, I've heard some some podcasters that have you know I don't know. Uh, 20 million subscribers, you know, they do make a lot of money, right? There's no doubt about that. But then they they play a lot of ads on their podcasts, you know, while they're while they're going on. So they do have that commercial. Sometimes the uh, the person who's coming on their show could be a paid uh, guest, right? So the the guest is uh, is there with an agenda to try and push something. So then there's that part to it too. They pay to come on the show and to talk about something, maybe push their product or uh, push uh, an agenda of some sort. But yeah, there's a, there's, there's definitely just like in the YouTube world where people publish on YouTube and TikTok and all that to make money. 
uh, the uh, podcasting is no different uh, these days from that perspective. It definitely, a lot of people do it for the money. Uh, I I don't for sure. <laughs> you know, I just do it because I enjoy doing it, and uh, my co-hosts luckily enjoy doing it as well. And you keep doing it over four hundred times. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's been it's now, been good so far. Yeah. Now, th- th- what you described here really sounded like there was a lot of pieces that were uh, not trivial, but we don't have any sense. Like you've been doing this for what, nine years, you said? Nine plus years, nine plus years, yeah, yeah almost 10 years, yeah. Could you give us some sense, like somebody just starting isn't going to do all of those things. You've told us everything you've learned over nine years, but if somebody was just getting started, how might they ramp up? Can you give us a sense, sense about that? So just so I understand, you want to say how they might ramp up to start a new podcast, correct? Well, you're not going to be getting everything into Google and get a Google and all this stuff that you talked about immediately. Like, you, yes. you're not going to set right. all of that stuff up before you ever do anything and get 20 podcasts and ready for the next one and also have to spend the time searching for topics and people and everything like that. This is a full-time job. How much time do you put into this? Yeah, that's a good, good point. Uh, so uh, in, initially, of course, you know, we spent uh, in the first few weeks, months or whatever, uh, definitely more time there just because, uh, especially 10 years ago, podcasting was not as popular as it was today. Right. Nowadays, everybody and, and anybody has their own podcast. But uh, in those days, there were very few. And so just understanding where to put this, how to create it was difficult. But that was uh, so just take a little bit of time then. Uh, to directly answer your question, these days, it's a lot easier to start your own podcast because there are so many public services now that help in that space. I mentioned earlier, some of them are like, you know, $10 a month or something like that to host a podcast. They make it really convenient. They even have the uh, the tools to do the recording on the website. So it's kind of a one-stop shop. Uh, you, you pay that one fee and you kind of, you know, plug in a microphone to your computer and that's it, right? You can go anywhere and and and, and publish your podcast. Uh, so uh, from a publishing perspective, most of the uh, uh, hurdles have been taken away. When you do it through those services, they take care of, monitor, uh, of publishing it, for, uh, publicizing it for you. It automatically goes on the iTunes and the Spotify and whatnot. Uh, you know, maybe it'll charge you a couple of bucks extra a month to, for some of this, for, for some of those features. But all of those are a click away, right? Uh, we chose to do it like the more traditional way, which is, you know, doing it uh, by hand almost, uh, primarily to understand what exactly happens under the covers. And also because we didn't want to, you know, spend the money to do it. We wanted to keep the cost down. Uh, even where we host a podcast today, uh, we use uh, Microsoft Azure to host it. Uh, I think I have it over here. Here's our Azure subscription, and you can see all of our MP3s starting from episode number one. Uh, that uh, that is uh, that is on our uh, on our Azure website. So this thing, fortunately, doesn't cost us any money because we um, we use um, uh, something called the MSDN subscription. So when you uh, are a software developer, Microsoft gives you a free Azure subscription. And so that's what we use. So it's free. When I say it's free, it's it's good for about $150 a month. Uh, and uh, it costs us only about $25 a month to to run the podcast uh, on an Azure subscription. And so just but this year, we have the flexibility. We had to learn something about how to host it. You know, yes, it's, you know, it's uh, uh, it, would, it would be uh, convenient to pay the 10 bucks or 15 bucks and do it through a service. But I think we've learned a lot more by doing it this way. And uh, at least uh, for us, it doesn't cost us any money to host it this way. The question is, do you have an index, online index to your episodes? You're asking if we have an index? Is that what you said? Yes. Yeah, so on our website, we have uh, this archive button. Uh, uh-huh. You can go all the way back uh, to to the very first episode here. Yeah, which is from 2013. Yeah. Okay. And and the topic that is covered in all your episodes is about 
the Azure cloud, how to use it's, it? It's yeah, it's all somehow related to the Azure cloud, right? And so the, it's actually a good uh, good uh, kind of explanation as to how we got started. I mentioned that when we uh, about ten years ago, when uh, the cloud was becoming something uh, more important, we realized that there wasn't anything to talk about the Azure cloud. But what I was listening, I was listening to podcasts at the time, and I heard one on the AWS cloud, right? And I was like, okay, that sounds like a nice way to learn, right? Because I I, I started listening to that AWS cloud, and within, uh, you know, after just listening to about ten episodes, I felt I was much more knowledgeable about AWS cloud, and I thought that was really nice. I was like, wait a minute, why isn't there something for Azure like this? And so that's what uh, drove us to start something like this for Azure. And so the idea is same thing. It's for people to listen to this, to learn about Azure, right? If you are, don't know anything about Azure, you want to just informally understand what it has to offer. This is a good way to do it uh, by listening to the podcast. So that's the, the theme that we created. It's a theme for where you can go and learn about new Azure technologies, learn about cloud computing specifically to Azure, of course. And, uh, you know, maybe it will, it, it's, it, you know, our audience is made up of a mix of people who are enthusiasts, or who are cloud enthusiasts, some who are just, uh, you know, generally interested. And then there are some who are hardcore uh, engineers and uh, uh, software architects and software engineers and whatnot who, who want to get a lot more out of it. You heard Andy Kerrigan uh, compliment Fred Cagle about putting chapters in the YouTube videos. Now, I'm looking at your list here, and I see, I mean, the, the most. This is our YouTube channel. Uh, you, I think you muted yourself. Yeah, I uh, let go of my space bar. The, uh, is, if I wanted to find a specific topic, that you covered someplace in these almost 500 episodes, how would I do that? Yeah, so that's a good point. So when we do the uh, uh, the, the podcast episodes, right, uh, we have a tag cloud over here. So we use tags uh, as much as possible, and you can kind of – so you can search by tags. You can also just search by any, any term on the top here, uh, you know, for example, if you wanted to look for, let's say, a uh, video, let's say, right? Uh, and so then uh, there it is. It talks about the video indexer service on Azure, right? Uh, or uh, things like or something related to video in some way. So uh, that's one way to use the search uh, term over here on the website. Uh, I believe um, you could also search on the in the YouTube channel as well over here. Similarly, uh, YouTube, we only started publishing it. Uh, I don't know how far. It doesn't go back all the way back. I think we only have uh, 91 episodes over here. So we only started YouTube uh, in the last three years or something, or, or two to three years ago. We didn't do YouTube before that. It was only audio. Uh, but if you go back, it'll still search all of the text uh, that's in here. Like if, with each episode, you know, uh, we kind of have some of the text about what the episode's about. And so if you search for some of those terms, you can find it this way as well. And these terms are also indexed by the uh, search engines. So if you look for that topic on Google uh, and you say, you know, Azure Path podcast, uh, you know, about video processing, it'll take you here, you know. Does something like Google actually listen to the podcast and find words so that it would show up in the search? No, it, that's why we have to add this metadata along with every episode. So uh, when, when we when we edit the uh, episode over here, we add all of this metadata over here, like, you know, some information about what the show is. The, uh, the transcript of the show is not included here, if that's what you're asking. So we used to uh, we used to show the tra we used to have the transcript. At one point, um, uh, it was a Microsoft company policy that if we have a podcast over there, there had to be an audio tra uh, a transcript that uh, people who are, were hard of hearing uh, could uh, could could download and read. And so we did that for a while. As a matter of fact, I think <laughs> it's, it's all that we picked it up. But this is the video indexer uh, is is actually the name of the service that will take a video and create a transcript. <laughs> out of it in Azure. Uh, so we actually used the video indexer service for a while and did it. 
but um, uh, we found out that there was, you know, there just was not, there was nobody really using it. So we stopped doing it. But uh, to answer your question, um, uh, Google is just looking at whatever text we put on this web, web page over here. And it will search whatever, what, you know, if, if you look for one of these things, it'll probably find it. It's not listening to what we have to say. Well, let me go back to my question. How much time do you put into this every week? It's about two to three hours a week. And yeah, you we've, have... got, we've got it down to a science now, and which is part of the why, right? Like I said, early on, it was a lot more of discovery and how to do it. it took more time. But then we've kind of got it down to a science now, uh, two to three hours a week. And because we have six co-hosts, so six of us, you can see our, our faces on the top here. Uh, uh, you know, we uh, sometimes uh, a couple of us even split the duties of uh, post-production. So I don't you know, normally I'm the one who does most of the post-production, uh, to, you know, the audacity and the uploading it to YouTube and whatnot. Uh, but now I have uh, Russell Young over here, this gentleman who is just next to me in the picture, uh, who is based out of London. Uh, he helps me out. Uh, so he, he does some of the post-production as well. Uh, you, you mentioned that now there are websites or places that you can go that basically help you to do this. That, that sounded pretty much like WordPress for... Yeah. Uh, so there are WordPress, of course, WordPress is a good for just hosting any blog, right? So you can certainly just put host your blog on WordPress. And like I said, this is, this is what we did is nothing but a blog over here where every, you can see it over here. It actually says blogs. <laughs> and so, and there are posts over here and each, each, uh, each episode is a post and you can do that with WordPress, right? Uh, of course you could, you could create that and yeah, you can, you can certainly do it. That's one way to do it. You still have to figure out where you're going to upload your MP3 files, but you still need storage to upload the MP3 files. I'm not sure if WordPress uh, gives you a lot of storage, but the MP3 files can take a lot of space. So I'll give you an example in hours. Uh, how much, to, uh, I'm trying to see if there's a way we could figure out how much space it takes. Let me go back here. Episodes, container properties. I don't know if this is really going to show us. No, it doesn't, but I think it's in the, right now we have something like seven or eight gigabytes or maybe even more of MP3s. Maybe I think it's more than that. And so that, that, that costs money. You know, you have to find a space where you can store that. As you can imagine, we have to go, we have to store all of the, uh, all of the uh, episodes all the way to episode, uh, number one, right? So, uh, so we have to keep, keep them around for a long time. So, uh, besides the, the, the hosting just a blog, uh, you have to think about storage. The new, uh, the new services that are out there. Let me just see if I can. I've not already looked at this. Let's see. Guest hosting sites. Uh, let me see which one. Yeah, of course, there's all of these. I don't know, let's just click on one of them. I have never used any of these, so I don't know uh, how good or bad they are. But uh, yeah, you can see here's one of them where, you know, Everything is kind of built in, right? You're publishing, it, it sends it to all of the, uh, the destination platforms. It's, uh, you know, it, it, uh, it even, uh, has the, the audio processing built in, right? Uh, you can see it generates your RSS feed. Everything is, is kind of done for you automatically. And so there's, yeah, there's, uh, these, there's these services over here that, that you can use. And this will make it really easy. You don't have to, uh, you know, you don't have to know everything that I just told you, right? You can focus on uh, what am I going to talk about? Where am I going to find my guests? You know, where am I going to find the co-hosts? Uh, where am I going to get advertising if I if that's what you want to do? So you can kind of focus on those things and not have to worry about the uh, nitty gritty of uh, hosting it or producing it. Does that answer your question, John? You're, you're muted. Yes. All right. Thank you. That's a good question. Thanks. Good questions. So, yeah, just to kind of give everyone an idea, I was just saying how, uh, you know, uh, we had recently done an episode with, uh, with Elizabeth, right? I don't know if this is going to show the, I don't know if the audio is going to play here, but, uh, uh,
And on Teams with me, we have Evan and our special guest, Elizabeth, who we're going to get to in just a minute. Uh, but before that, let's uh, talk about some news. Uh, Evan, I put a few news items in the uh, in the uh, OneNote, so which I can cover. I don't know if yeah. you... Yeah, so just to give you an idea, but that's, it's, you know, we're, this is the most recent episode that we did. It's, it's just... Uh, I was talking for about 30 minutes, right? And this is the, the recording. This is the whole recording. Uh, the, the JSON yeah. mapping and yeah. um, figuring that out. Um, but, yeah, I mean, if you want to do any validation on it, it would it's quicker and easier to do it than going through kind of field by field, if you will. Right. right? Okay. Um, mm-hmm. How about- Right. So well, once you kind of have something like this, right, uh, if you have the video, I can take this video and post it directly to YouTube. And that's, of course, the easiest thing. Uh, I think most of you have done this before, may have done this before, but uh, we can do it right now is just uh, hit the create button in YouTube, upload the video, select the file. I'm going to select our file over there. I'll just change the name a little bit on the file. Okay, and uh, let's just upload that file, right? And yeah, then we're going to give it some uh, metadata. So let's say episode 458, integration patterns, right? You give it some description, you know, uh, Evan and Suji talk talk to Elizabeth about the options we have in Azure to integrate external systems, files, and messages. All right, and then that's it. You kind of just have to click through that uh, and make it a public podcast, public uh, thing, and voila, in about one hour, this will be available, right? Yeah, YouTube takes about an hour to process the file. So, uh, this will be uh, ready soon. So that's you know the, the audio pro, the the video one is very easy. It's the audio one that does take a little bit of time. Like I said, you have to you have to import it into Audacity uh, and kind of do some work. So you kind of pull it over here. Uh, you get uh, your desktop. You can pull the video in directly here. Episode four fifty eight. Uh, could you record it in Audacity, or is that not quite good enough? Uh, Audacity does uh, audio only, so we want to record the Meet Teams channel, uh, the, the actual Zoom call or the Teams call, which includes video just like it would uh, when you watch uh, this, the recording okay. of this show. Uh, but uh, we have to, ex- uh, in order to get the, vi- uh, the audio component, we have to use Audacity to extract the audio from the video. So that's what we did over here is okay, I understand. To that. Yeah. And so it you extracted have, the You have more than audio in mind then. Okay. Um uh yeah. Uh, we, we wanted to put the video for our for this for the purpose of our listeners as well. So here we have, you know, we've uh like I said, we've, we've got it in Audacity, and then you have to run a couple of uh effects over here. One of them we run is the compressor, which will kind of even out the highs and the lows for you. It'll kind of process that that, that file and uh, just just take away all the highs and lows and make it a little more uniform. Uh, it's called the compressor. There's also something called the equalizer, which is actually different. Uh, and then uh, we do uh, truncate silence, uh, which is here. And that, uh, like I was saying, it's going to take away all of those little gaps that you see in here. You know, it's going to make it a lot more, you can see it kind of, took away all the excessive gaps, uh, makes the audio sound a lot better. And uh, then you can run the click removal as well, and that would remove any clicks uh, in the audio, right? So that's kind of easy to do. And then once the the file's ready, you can just upload it to, uh, to Blob Storage and it's ready to go. So right now, all I have to do is to uh, export this file as an MP3. Oh, I forgot to do the important part, which is uh, adding the music. So insert audio. Uh, Azure Podcasts, and uh, let's just say the entry music. Where is that intro? Oh, yeah. yeah. So we add the entry music there, and the way you do it is that you copy it from here, you take it over here, 
you paste it there, right? It just puts it in the front, right? Uh, then you import the audio again. And you, you know, this time we're going to import the ex exit audio, which is here, I think. Yep, that's the one. Same thing. Copy that. Go to the end of the episode here. Try to get as close to the end as possible and paste it there. Right. And, uh, and that's it. And then you can kind of try it out over here if you want to by clicking over here and hit the play button. Platform Microsoft Azure. Your hosts, Cynthia Crane, Evan Basilic, Suji DeMello, Kenno Roden, Kel Teeter, and Russell Young discuss a different service or solution on each show with subject matter experts to explain how to get started, how different services work, and how to make decisions in tricky scenarios. You can find out more about our podcast at azpodcast.com or follow us on Twitter at Azure Podcast. Well, welcome back to the Azure Podcast. This is episode number 458 being recorded on the 26th of April, 2023, with special guest Elizabeth Graham. Now, you'll notice that uh, when uh, when, the, when we did that, there was a little bit of a gap here. So I might go and just cut that out because that was a little too much. So we'll just uh, get rid of that gap just so that it kind of flows a little easier. So that was the only thing I could see that was a little odd there. Yeah, so that's all it is with the with the post production is just on Twitter at Azure Podcast. Well, welcome back to the Azure Podcast. This that sounds better. That's uh, terrific. Is there, are there any other questions? I'm uh, happy to take them. Your the your URLs are on the. Website, Bcug website, I take it. Uh, for the podcast, I'll yes. put them over here. Uh, I just want to, I'll, I'll actually uh, maybe put them in this chat over here. Well, I think. Okay. Are we doing? I had, I had included. I thought the uh, AzurePodcast dot com. Is that what it is? Yeah, AzPodcast dot com. I yep. think that's in your. In your bio or in the description, if you go to the web page now, uh, you'll be able to just click on bcug.com, click on the link, and it'll take you, as I said earlier in this uh, meeting, to the bio and description of the presentation page. And that main link is in there. And presumably on your main link there, you'll direct people to everything else. And the podcast link should be there. Show us the uh, Azure uh, AzurePodcast.com. Yeah, so that's uh, the podcast. That was where we were originally over here. Uh, now this is uh, I'm I'm logged in as an administrator. That's why you see all these additional things over here. But let me just log off from here. Uh, and this is what you would see. And this is what I'm saying. This is the kind of uh, that's a little uh, app that I wrote to calculate the downloads, and it puts it here automatically every night. It goes and calculates all the downloads. Uh, this is the most recent episode we did, um, and it goes back a few episodes here. Uh, and then, uh, of course, uh, uh, you can, you know, you can you can just it's just like a normal uh, page. We can go back to all the all the posts and whatnot. But each episode has uh, obviously some information about the topic, the speaker. Uh, some uh, the link to the this is the URL for the MB3 file that is essentially the podcast. The one would be just uh, you saw me editing in Audacity. Uh, the YouTube link is also here. Uh, any resources that the uh, the guest gives us is here. And then uh, at least in our podcast, the format that we've chosen is that at the start of every podcast, we spend a few minutes talking about what's new uh, in the uh, Azure space. You know, and uh, that's an optional thing. So uh, there's some links about what's new over here as well. We put those links in here as well. So I I misspoke. It was I see it's azpodcast dot com com. Yep. Not Azure Podcast, but azpodcast dot com. Az Podcast. Yep. 
yeah and if you uh, i think if you go you know uh, yeah look at it in, in google i suppose and say you know you just look for the azure podcast right and the very first one should be us <clears throat> And then, of course, you can see uh, there's a link to the to the Apple uh, uh, the podcast on the Apple iTunes, the podcast on the uh, the YouTube channel. Everything will show up with the very first four, four entries, and that's because we I went into Google and I added our uh, podcast URL like you know ten years ago, so it, it's it's it shows it on the top now. <laughs> but that one says the uh, .net, not .com. Yeah, uh, and that's because uh, in the uh, – so this azpodcast.com, uh, you don't see it, but behind the covers, it is actually redirecting to uh, that .NET address. Of course, you'll just see it at azpodcast.com. Uh, yeah, so – yeah, and then uh, you know, on the right hand side here, we've added some additional information. We, we've put about, you know, how you can find us on Spotify, YouTube. Uh, in some cases, people have asked us to create flyers if they want to share with the community. So there's a flyer that we created as well. You can download a flyer, uh, and this flyer you could uh, pass it around, pass it along to uh, people in your, you know, if you have like like BCUG or something, if they want to keep copies of it or whatever. Uh, but we created this little flyer uh, where people can download and uh, you know print and. Hand or hand like handouts kind of thing. Did you start uh, out using Zoom or something before Zoom? You're using Teams now, but Teams is even Teams is new. Yeah. And yeah. Zoom is new. We started on Skype. We started on Skype actually originally. Uh, and then uh, after Skype, we did Link, which was uh, the, the follow-up to Skype. And then after Link, L-Y-N-C, that is. And then after Link came Teams. Uh, so Link and Teams made it real easy, but Skype, there was no built-in recording. Uh, so we had to use a third-party tool to bolt on recording in a Skype, uh, uh, in the Skype uh, app. But... Uh, with Teams and Link, it's kind of built in, so it's a lot easier. Uh, so how many of the people who are on here are ready to start their own podcast about something? What would you want a podcast about if somebody started one, if not you? Is there, is, there, is it, Does anyone have, like, a, a topic that they feel very strongly about or, you know, passionate about things like that I've got several but uh, <clears throat> I'm hoping my time will get a little more free now you didn't get fired right. right what was that are you retiring no I'm just hoping I don't have as many crises as I have to deal with <laughs> It, yeah, as I said, if, you know, it, once you uh, it, initially it'll take a few, uh, more than a couple of hours a week, but uh, uh, beyond that, and it all depends on how frequently you do it, right? Uh, you can start by doing it once every two weeks if you if you if you want to, just to give you a little more space and not to take too much time. But as you get uh, more comfortable with it, you'll find it's a lot easier, it's uh, a lot more fulfilling, and uh, maybe you could increase the frequency at that point. TikTok became extremely significant recently. That's short videos. Right. Now, I don't know that you can, I mean, video, you can send something much more quickly visually than you can speaking. But do you have any sense of, of what the number of users, the consumers of YouTube versus podcasts versus TikTok. Yeah, I mean, uh, there, you know, the, the kind of, uh, as you said, the format and the purpose for each of those is different, right? For each of them. Uh, obviously, in the case of TikTok, uh, it's, it's kind of mostly entertainment, I suppose, right? 
Uh, and there are many that are informative as well. Uh, I don't use TikTok a lot, so but I have seen, I know that there are a few uh, Microsoft people. Uh, Scott Hanselman is one of them. He's a popular podcaster who also now uses TikTok. And what he does is he uses the 60 seconds to talk about, you know, just one qu- one thing really fast, right? One, one kind of topic. Maybe it's, uh, and he, you know, he talks about Windows sometimes. Oh, yeah, there's Windows 11 feature, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, and he'll, spend, he'll spend a whole t- 60 seconds talking about it, you know? So, yeah, you could do that. Uh, again, because it's, uh, it is a video option to it. You can show things on the screen. You can, uh, you can put pictures on. And so there's, uh, and that's one format, right? But it requires, uh, somebody to look at a screen. So this is where the consumer, uh, has to be considered. If you want to have a captive audience who can look at a screen, uh, who has the, uh, the time to look at a screen, then using something like TikTok or YouTube makes a lot of sense uh, because you are forcing people to look at a screen. But if you want people to listen to your uh, listen to your thing without having to look at the screen, then having an audio option uh, is very good. And uh, when it comes to audio, you t- generally have to go with not the short, but the more, like, you know, like I said, 25 to 30 minutes, maybe even an hour uh, length uh, time. So uh, in terms of, you know, the popularity, uh, again, um, if if it's for listening to content primarily, uh, the the more uh, the the more famous celebrities, I guess, uh, have uh, many uh, subscribers. I mentioned some of them are making millions of dollars, uh, you know, to to kind of host a podcast and to talk about things, uh, but that, those are you know very few and far between, right? Uh, the uh, in, in the in the in the in the YouTube uh, case, you can get a lot more of those kind of uh, successes, right? In terms of you know people with having uh, maybe a million or so subscribers, uh, and you can certainly uh, uh, have more chances of finding them there. Uh, and in the TikTok case, it's kind of yeah. I mean, I suppose I don't know much about TikTok, so I don't want to say uh, I don't I don't want to speak for them, but. Uh, I guess uh, you know if it's probably more for younger audience uh, is is how what I would guess. Uh, I, I know I don't want to look at something just uh, for a minute and and flip to something else or whatever. It's not something that I have uh, gotten up used to yet. Can I ask you something? Are you using a yeah. specialized camera? What kind of camera do you use? Uh, it's a it's a Logitech 4K camera. <clears throat> What do you have? Your your camera is pretty crisp uh, out there. Rob. I'm using my phone as a camera. This looks pretty this looks pretty good. I think you've got good lighting and everything. I think it helps. And what microphone is that? That's a toner microphone. That looks oh, pretty cool. Well, it's a toner or some yeah toner. Yeah, yeah. That's, 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 you've got good audio quality there. Uh, you could easily uh, run a podcast from where you're sitting right now. You've got you've got most of the setup already done. <laughs> There you go, Ralph. We're expecting something. Okay. Just a minute. I got to talk to my wife. I'm going to use this. Even, <laughs> even if you just used it to produce uh, some of your videos sometimes, you do. Yeah. You put together oh. so many interesting videos coming at, at things from so many different angles, showing us your equipment and stuff like that. You know, this is and what I use all the time. Your enthusiasm comes across every time. Absolutely. Yeah, I think you, you can certainly have a podcast or uh, a, at least a YouTube channel if you don't already have one. Uh, you say the enthusiasm. Now, you've been going nine years and you personally must have felt some ups and downs in your enthusiasm for things Azure, but they keep coming out with new stuff and changing things on you, right? I mean, what is it that keeps this burning yeah i mean you know we were concerned about that when we first started and really the expectation was that we would have 20 episodes and then we would run out of content right i, I that's what me and my colleague <clears throat> thought originally we you know we, we we wrote up a list of the first 20 episodes we said yeah we've got enough to talk about so we started recording them one by one and just putting them out there because obviously uh we had no subscribers initially and then they suddenly the subscribers started to increase uh, but we didn't, uh, you know, we thought like, oh, once we're done with 20 episodes, we won't have anything to talk about, right? And as it turns out, as you said, you know, there was always something new coming out in Azure. And uh, uh, and then so there was always something new to talk about. 
And then other people wanted to come on the show and talk about things. <laughs> so, you know, we started getting people coming on. So we had to do less talking. We did most of the asking of questions or interviewing style, uh, you know, uh, playing the role of the interviewer, and then guests would come on and answer questions. And so we had to kind of prepare less at that point, right? Nowadays, I don't have to prepare for an actual episode. Uh, I just have to make sure that we have enough of uh, guests uh, lined up. And typically, we are booked out, uh, booked uh, around about two months out uh, in, our, in our schedule. What do your one or two, I mean, do you listen? Do you, are you a consumer of podcasts? beyond your own what are one or two of the ones that you find most interesting personally yeah the the one that i do listen to occasionally is the npr podcast uh that's that's, that's one of my favorite uh, and i listen to it actually on my alexa uh, device uh, in the kitchen i can just play it over there so when i'm uh, sitting there doing you know cooking or something like that i play the MP- npr podcast and if i were to search for that on Google or something. I just search for NPR podcast. Yeah, NPR. That's it. They have a few. I think the one specifically that uh, I think I, I listen to is called Fresh Air. I think. But they have actually more than one NPR podcast. And then, of course, I listen to some other tech podcasts as well. Uh, occasionally, uh, Scott Hans- I mentioned Scott Hanselman. Uh, you know, he's a popular uh, podcaster, but he talks about all things, not specifically. Uh, he talks about lots about Windows, uh, you know, so uh, definitely he covers a lot more uh, breadth of uh, topics in the computing space. Ours is focused primarily on Azure. Is there any particular app that might make it easier as a consumer of podcasts to keep them organized and be able to sort? Can you make a suggestion? Yeah, that's a good good, good question, Sadie. So uh, it kind of depends on, you know, if you have, uh, if you have the, um, uh, the iTunes, uh, sorry, an, an Apple uh, device or an Android device, I'm assuming on your phone, you're talking about on your phone, um, so on the uh, on the uh, on the Android, I'm trying to remember the name of the app that I had on my Android phone. I, I, it'll come to me now. I'll, I'll have to send that to you after the fact. But on the uh, on the iPhone, I use the uh, the Apple uh, Podcast uh, app, you know, uh, which which actually works very well. Uh, Spotify is also if you do subscribe to Spotify, I found that to be very convenient because it kind of you know, you're listening to Spotify anyway, and then it's very easy to just say, okay, I'm, I'll listen to, instead of, you know, listening to Bruce Springsteen, I'm going to listen to, you know, uh, my podcast today or whatever. And so it's all there in one place, right? Uh, and that's one of the reasons why we put our app, our, our podcast in Spotify so that people can find us there as well. And it, and it, and it kind of lists it out exactly like you would all the other music. So in, in the middle of your music is all your podcasts. It's all the one place, you know. So if you, if you can listen to music a lot, I definitely say uh, use the Spotify app uh, to, to find the podcast. If you, uh, if you don't use pod, uh, Spotify, then, and you have an iPhone, for sure use, uh, I think the Apple, uh, uh, the Apple podcast app is actually very good. And uh, the way that the the podcast apps work is, you know, you can you can f- configure them uh, to download the podcast uh, to your phone all at once. So this way, uh, let's say you we were going to go on a on a on a plane trip somewhere, uh, you know, you could tell the podcast to download all the uh, like maybe the last five episodes onto your phone and then listen to them offline. So you can certainly do that as well. And the, the whole oh, point uh, of the whole point of podcasts is, I mean, it started, it's a podcast. It started with the iPod, which was audio only like a Sony Walkman. And right. so it was meant to be something that you could stick in your pocket and put your headphones on and, and listen to while you were doing something else. That's and right. so that's a good, good point. And, and so. Yes, you do have to search for something, but you probably searched for it and then downloaded it and you know what's available there and you have a way to index it that you would get used to on your phone. 
Yeah, there's a, there's, a, there's a fair amount of discovery that happens with podcasts. And the nice thing about it is that you can just subscribe, subscribe to it. Uh, you listen to one or two episodes, it doesn't work. You unsubscribe and then try something else, right? And so there's a bit of discovery involved there. All the apps, all the podcast, podcast apps uh, let you do that part very easily where you can discover things. Uh, it'll, it'll give you a lot of information, metadata about the podcast. And some, uh, many of them have uh, reviews. You know, uh, also about podcasts, if you see them, you'll see some people have likes and dislikes or whatever on the show. So you can use that to, um, you know, to, to kind of narrow down what you want to listen to. So you can certainly, uh, all of them, I think, do that uh, to varying degrees. Uh, I'll send you the name of the one that I had in mind. It was not a free, uh, I believe it was like 2 or $3 or whatever in the app store. But uh, some of the the ones that cost a couple of bucks actually are a lot better than the free ones. Hey, Sujit. Yeah. Uh, Andy, number one, go back to the part about how it's very simple and anybody can do this. And it, I missed that part at the beginning. <laughs> uh, no, no, great great presentation. Uh, I'd be curious if you're going to make your uh, your slideshow available to us later on to look at, but I also had a question for you. Yeah. If I if I wanted to look for something about Linux, for instance, I can go to a handful of Linux sites like DistroWatch or Linux Today or whatever. If I wanted to know about music, there are different, there are different websites. Is there any sort of a uh, clearinghouse or a, an index based, you know, kind of a, a neutral territory where you could search on podcast rather than just going in and relying on Bing searches or Google searches looking for a particular webcast. Yeah, that, that's a, you know the, the, there are a few of these uh, marketplaces. And by the way, I will I will uh, you know put the slides out. Uh, I'll, I'll send, send them to John and make them available. But um, uh, so there are uh, um, you know many many of these clearing houses right the problem is that each one of them uh is is not complete right so if you go to one they may have only some if you go to another they'll have another list there's not one that has a full list uh and that's why i suggest using um uh, just uh, you know like a search engine you look for any topic and put the word podcast after that right and that'll typically take you to the you know the the url for the podcast just like you saw with the azure podcast when i shared it uh, similar to that, you know, you just have to use the word podcast in your search and, uh, it'll, it should take you to the, to that, to a list of, uh, feeds that, uh, that have those podcast sites. Thank you. Uh, but the, uh, the, like, uh, as, uh, uh, Sandy Duma was asking, some of these apps have a good, uh, search feature built in as well. And so what the apps do is when you search in the app, uh, it, uh, it kind of filters out some of the results that you, it, 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 it uses Google or Bing behind the you know, scenes, but it filters out some of the results to, to make sure that these are really, uh, results related to podcasts as opposed to, you know, something else. So it does do a little bit of a better job of giving you the results in the app. And then, you know, it kind of shows you pictures, you get some reviews, you get some, some additional information there. So I think searching from the app might be a good way to do it. But if you just want to jump on your computer and try things over there, uh, just, yeah, just use any, uh, uh, any of the search engines should be fine. Thank you. Welcome. And if anyone's thinking of, uh, starting, uh, you know, uh, a podcast, uh, I'm certainly, uh, happy to help them, you know, get through the initial hurdles, uh, just so that yeah, the experience is a little better for them. Uh, yeah, like I said, there is, there's ways you can do this with, uh, with very low cost, sometimes free. Uh, if you do it on Azure itself, if you host it on Azure, uh, I know for a fact that I was just looking at it today in preparation for this, that, uh, you can get uh, an Azure subscription for the, for the most part for free for the first year. So this way is a good way for you to just, you know, try it out. You, you know, if your podcast doesn't work out, it's not going to cost you much uh, or anything at all. And you can then just cancel the subscription. So you can certainly do that as well if you just want to kick the tires a little bit. Uh, but you do, you do have to have a bit of a commitment, like I said early on, uh, to, to doing this. It is, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's a little bit of a time. Uh, it, initially it's going to take up some of your time just to line up content, create content, do some recordings, 
Uh, there'll be a lot of trial and error. You'll do the recordings one way. They won't work. You'll do it another way. They, they may work. You have to find the right uh, kind of mix uh, that works for you. Uh, you know, we've just worked out uh, a format that works for us, and it's uh, our audiences come to expect it. Uh, like I said, you know, we have that little bit of uh, introduction. Uh, we talk about some news, and then we talk, talk to our guests, uh, and we have a QA, like, like a very casual question answer format. Uh, so you got to find uh, what format works for you or your audience, and that might take a little bit of trial and error before you get the right uh, results. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, thanks so much all for all the great questions. Uh, it's really, uh, I, I, I enjoy sharing all of this uh, with you today and uh, thanks for all the attention. This is great. Thank you so much, Sujit. Uh, Welcome. Thank you. Clapping. Attaboy. <laughs> Attaboy. There we go. And uh, thanks. You know, there were, there were tidbits in here, which independently, like just you showing us how you did things with uh, audacity. Just that little piece for a few seconds was also educational all by itself, but it had a whole context around it as well. So really enjoyed that. Thank you so much for the time that you put in to preparing this for us and for sharing it with us. And okay. I hope you continue okay. to succeed with this. Thank you. It was, it was <clears throat> nice. Uh sharing with with this audience. I enjoyed, of course, talking to all of you over here. I enjoy uh, listening to some of the other presenters that you have. And so it's nice to be able to also share what I know. Yeah.